Hi there and welcome to today's presentation and what I'm going to be talking about today is all about turning employees into brand ambassadors. So with that, um, hopefully you can see my screen because I am sharing my slides and I'm going to go ahead and um, jump right in here. So the first thing that I want to talk about here for a second is basically what we'll be covering. So this class is for you and if you're listening, then chances are you are um, and either a leader or aspiring leader um, or someone who's interested in becoming a brand ambassador. And so that is exactly what we're going to be talking about today. So I will be uh, just taking a minute uh, to introduce myself. Um, so my name is Sharissa Sebastian and I'm a leadership and executive coach for women in corporate leadership. I do work with both um, male and female leaders, but uh, primarily my focus is on working with women. Uh, I'm also a TEDx speaker, writer for Forbes and the Huffington Post, um, an author, radio show host, and also an uh, MBA grad. And um, I've got my uh, degree in, like master's degree in technology uh, leadership. So my specialty is really just helping my clients fully step into their value and confidence and enjoy uh, amazing opportunities so they can completely uh, be energized and experience true performance in their work. And as leaders, I know it's really important to be able to um, to help and support other people along the way. And so that's really my focus um, as well. And so um, over the years, over the last uh, about seven or eight years, I've had the privilege of coaching um, several leaders and executives at companies like LinkedIn and Facebook, uh, Microsoft, and you know you can see the link here on the screen. Um, but basically, the, uh, the reason I do the work that I do is to um, not only just help people get the best out of themselves, but help them lead really well and be really effective um, when it comes to the work that they're doing, but also um, the experience that they're getting from their work. So for today's uh, agenda, this is basically what we're going to be covering. And so the way I'm going to approach this is maybe a little bit differently. So these are the four things you're going to walk away with at the end of my presentation today. But one of the things I wanted to mention to you um, to basically get the most out of this is if you can make sure you are in a distraction-free environment as much as possible. Um, and you're also going to probably want to take a lot of notes because there's a lot that I'm going to be covering that's going to touch on all of these topics. And the way I'm going to be approaching this that is a little bit different is I'm going to be sharing with you 10 points that are going to answer all of these questions that you see, or all of these areas that are going to cover this, um, everything that you see on the screen. So basically what I'm going to be talking about today is the environment that's needed to create and nurture brand ambassadors, how to attract, train, and equip your, your employees to become ambassadors, um, and understanding what motivates your people to become evangelists of your brand. And then lastly, it's going to be about uh, measuring and tracking success and how to rinse and repeat what's working and get rid of what is not. So with that, let me jump right in. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is when it comes to your employees and even you know your customers and things like that, um, you really want to make sure that you are caring about them as whole people, right? So not just about them as employees and what they can contribute but really making sure that they understand that you are there to support them and to help them in whatever way you can. And this is really important when creating brand ambassadors because you want people that are passionate, that are all in, that are engaged and motivated, right? To um, about your brand, about your company and what you're trying to do. And so in order to do that, you need to make sure that you are caring and nurturing those people. So when I talk about caring what they care about, what I mean is, um, I, you know, making sure you understand what is important to them. What are some of the drivers? What are some of the reasons they do the work that they do? Or they really engaged in, in the process? Um, what are some of the things that motivate them? Um, also, from uh, you also want to make sure that you're going the extra mile. You're, mile. you're doing the things that you know are going to really make a difference. And so that's the one thing. Um, the other thing I want to share with you here is one of my favorite quotes, and this is from Maya Angelou. And she talks about the fact that people don't care how much you know until um, they know how much you care. So caring matters. The other nice thing about this is if you do this for your employees um, and they are going to feel that from you and that's going to, um, you know, that's going to translate into how they represent your brand and how they come across to other people. And people are going to be attracted. We, we know this, right? We all are attracted to people that truly care and value and appreciate us as human beings, not just for what we can do, but for who we are. So that's why this point is so important. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to talk about is equipping, training, and empowering um, employees. So this is, I'm going to take this from a, a couple of different perspectives. It's not just about equipping, training, and empowering them on your brand or your product, but it's also about thinking about like the type of people that you want to represent your brand. So thinking about that, the culture that you want to, you know, that you want to foster in your work environment. How do you want those people to represent you, the company, and the brand? 
And so equipping and training and empowering for that is going to be incredibly, incredibly important. They need to have the tools and the support um, and everything that they need on an ongoing basis. And there needs to be a feedback loop to make sure that they have every single thing that they need at every step of the way. So they feel empowered and equipped to do the work that you're calling them to do. Also, this can creates consistency across the board, right? When you think about building brand ambassadors, you want to make sure that your customers or whoever is on the receiving end of the message that they're putting out there um, has a consistent um, feel for the brand and a consistent message that's coming across. So in order to do that, you need to make sure that you are really focusing on equipping, training, and empowering your employees. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is growth and development opportunities. And what I mean by this is growth and development opportunities that resonate and matter to your brand ambassadors. It's not just things that uh, you know the company thinks are going to be important, but it also needs to intersect with not just what the brand represents and what they need to communicate and um, kind of emote as brand ambassadors, but it's also what they feel is important to them for their own growth and development. That's going to be incredibly important because it kind of goes back to that first point that I made about caring what they care about, right? You want to make sure that you are focusing on those areas that they care about and they feel like they have opportunities to stretch, to get out of their comfort zone, to grow and to develop. Because without that, they can lack motivation, things become you know, like monotonous and you never want them to get into that space where it's like they don't feel like they have opportunities to develop their skills and to grow in a way that's actually gonna be beneficial to your company and your brand. So growth and development is absolutely critical. And of course, this has to evolve over time. This is not a one and done type of thing where you set up, you know, um, maybe training opportunities or development opportunities, and then it never gets revisited. This needs to be something that is ongoing, and there needs to be a feedback loop between your employees and these development opportunities to make sure that at every step of the way and every stage of their development, they feel like they have opportunities to, um, to explore new things and to do things a little bit differently. This also goes to empowering them as well. Okay, the other thing I'm going to talk about is strong con connection to a cause and a mission. So this goes to meaningful work, having impact, having a purpose. So in the type of work that I do, when I work with my clients, this is a big deal. And this is one of those factors that can easily uh, be demotivating if people don't feel like their work is meaningful, like um, they, you know, what they're doing matters, if they don't feel like they have the kind of impact that they want to have, um, or you know, they don't have that purpose. So what's going to be important from a leadership perspective is to make sure that that cause and the mission and the reason behind the company and the brand is crystal clear and it needs to attract your brand ambassadors to your company the people that really can support that mission and be behind that mission no matter what they need to feel that so strongly in them um, the connection to that cause and mission that they are willing to do what it takes apple is a great example of this right so um, you can look at some of those um, big organizations that have done this really really well and so that's something that's going to be important is meaningful work is very important to help people be really engaged with their work. And then that translates into having um, really great brand ambassadors, because we always we always tend to gravitate towards people who just are on fire right? have, they have that passion, feel really com uh, connected to something that matters to them. OK, so I touched on this a little bit, but the next thing is um, consistent and constructive two way feedback, right? So it, there needs to always be um, a check-in point with your employees. So if, if you're expecting them to be brand ambassadors, you need to check in with them every step of the way to make sure that um, they are consistent in terms of the brand messaging, but also they feel like they're supported, they have what they need, they have those growth opportunities that we talked about, um, but it also gives you an opportunity to tweak anything that needs to be tweaked. So training, how you are attracting the right candidates, um, into your, you know, into your organization and things like that. But that it can only come if you have a really effective feedback loop. You're constantly getting input, you're getting feedback, and then you can make adjustments as necessary. So you want to make sure that your uh, employees or your brand ambassadors uh, feel like they have a voice and they can be heard and they can provide you with that feedback and that you it's actually going to, you know, it's going to matter and you're going to take action on it. So that part is really key. Um, you never want your brand ambassadors to feel like they're out on an island by themselves but they need to know that you are there to support them, that when they provide feedback, that in some way um, you're going to you know, help them under either understand why action cannot be taken at this time, or um, you're going to be able to actively engage in helping them to make those adjustments and improvements along the way. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna talk about is support and 
advocacy. Um, so what I mean by this is just having their back. And this is one of the things I hear a lot that people want from their leaders. They want to uh, you know, be with a leader that they know is going to support them no matter what, that's going to advocate for them no matter what, and is going to have their back, especially in those challenging moments. Um, they need to make sure, they, you know, they want to make sure that they um, have a leader that they can trust. So if you have a support team in place that is going to be supporting your brand ambassadors, then one of the things I would um, highly recommend doing is just making sure that that support team is you know, really well equipped to be able to, um, to support your, uh, your brand ambassadors, advocate on their behalf. So if there's anything that they need um, to be able to advocate for them um, and then just have their back, you know, where they can feel that no matter what happens, um, the, the company is there to, to support them. Okay, the next one, um, and this is maybe one of my favorite things when it comes to motivating and, and you know making sure people are engaged and fulfilled and all of those things, is celebration, acknowledgement, awards, recognition, all of those things, for instance. Because who doesn't want to be recognized and rewarded, right, for the work that we do? That is a huge deal, especially when you, um, as a brand ambassador, you know, you're front and center, right? You're on the front lines. You're the, the face of the brand. And so, um, and when you communicate, you need to communicate in a way that is, you know, authentic and, and all of those things. And so the more we take time to celebrate our um, and acknowledge our accomplishments, to reward and recognize our ambassadors and people that are working so hard, you know, behind the scenes as well, um, the more they're motivated and inspired to go above and beyond, beyond and to do more and to, you know, stand behind that uh, that brand and be a really, really great represent uh, representative. The other nice thing about um, celebration and acknowledgement is a lot of times we're so focused on the next thing, right? The next goal or the thing that we're moving towards. We don't take the time to actually look back and reflect at how far we've come. And that is so important because that helps that momentum to keep going and it helps to keep, you know, morale up and all of that as well. And it just helps you to, you know, to um, focus on the things that are working really well and gives us an opportunity to celebrate those things so we can have more of that, encourage more of that in our brand ambassadors and also attract people that are going to um, you know, like emulate what it is that we want. But if it needs to be celebrated, acknowledged. There needs to be some kind of recognition and reward um, built into that so people feel really valued um, and appreciated for the work that they do. Okay, so the next one, and this is a big, big topic right now, and that is uh, psychological safety. So what I mean by psychological uh, safety, just to kind of simplify this, uh, this psychological term, um, is basically um, making sure that your brand ambassadors, your employees feel safe in that work environment. And I don't just mean physically safe, I mean emotionally, um, intellectually uh, safe from that perspective as well. So what this means is people need to feel safe to voice their opinion. They need to feel safe um, to make mistakes. They need to, you know, obviously there needs to be some guardrails and, and things like that in place and some boundaries there. But at the same time, they need to feel safe, um, you know, when there's a, a problem or sharing whatever it is that they feel is important to share and things like that. Because when people don't feel safe, they can be a very high level of stress and they tend to pull back. And that's where you lose creativity, you lose innovation um, and things like that. And people just become disengaged and unmotivated. And you never want that, right, For uh, from people who are going to be the face of a brand. You want them to feel safe. You want them to feel supported. And so it's going to be really, really important to focus on psychological safety, making sure that they understand that um, it's okay, you know, to um, for them to share whatever it is that they, if they have ideas, if they have, you know, things that they can bring to the table, it's okay to make mistakes um, and also set up a structure that can be supportive so that resilience can be built into that process as well. And then, you know, you learn, you grow and you develop, right, from those mistakes and from those things. But if they don't feel safe to be who they are at work or as a brand ambassador, um, it, that whole thing is going to fall flat because that's they're not going to be able to portray the image of the brand in a way that they um, otherwise would be. Um, and so that's why psychological safety is so important. The other part of this um, that I want to mention here is belonging. So that's another big deal when it comes to any brand, right? So anytime you have a brand, um, you want to make sure that people feel like there's a sense of belonging. This ties into the mission and making sure that people feel like it's one team, right? One mission and you're all on purpose and you're all moving towards a, um, a goal. And people like to feel belonging. We, we know this from community, right? So people love to feel part of a community of like-minded people that are you know, on board and working towards something that's meaningful. Um, so you wanna make sure that they feel like they belong in that 
environment, whatever that means, whether it's psychological safety, whether it's being on mission um, and just being on the same page there. But there needs to be that sense of community, that sense of, um, you know, like camaraderie amongst other um, brand ambassadors, amongst other employees and things like that, because people really need that sense of belonging in order to feel psychologically safe. Okay, so the next thing we're going to be talking about is clear guidelines and expectations. Um, so another part of this is, for, first of all, when it comes to guidelines, um, it's really important, like from the time you hire your employees on, um, that they know exactly what is expected of them. And there needs to be consistent alignment with leadership um, as far as what the expectations are, what their day-to-day -day responsibilities need to look like, um, as far as autonomy goes, what are they responsible for, um, what part of their job can they kind of take the ball and run with it, and what, what part of their job needs to be a little bit more structured. So all of those things need to be very, very clearly outlined and articulated, and it needs to be consistent communication when it comes to what those expectations are. Because this is one of the biggest areas I, I um, that I see as a leadership coach is when there isn't alignment and clear expectations, people start to get disengaged. People start to get frustrated. They see, uh, start to feel like they don't matter as much or the work that they're doing is not, doesn't matter because they, they, they have different expectations to leadership. And so it just kind of be becomes this like perfect storm where it just doesn't, you know, it just doesn't work for anyone. So you want to make sure that's in place. The other thing you want to make sure is that there, is, there are ways to track and to measure success. So there definitely need be, needs to be some way to be able to track and measure success that is tangible, that is clearly communicated, that they buy into. So that's another huge part of this process. There needs to be buying from your brand ambassadors as far as um, things like what does success look like? How do we measure, track and follow up right, with, with that? And um, how do we, you know, how do we make sure that we're all on the same page? And one way to do that is to clearly def define what does success look like? How do we measure that? How do we track that? And where, how do we check in and follow up on where we are at any point in time and what support do we need if we're not where we need to be? So that's number nine. And then finally, number 10, this is specifically for my leaders, but any brand ambassador, uh, you know, this is applicable to any brand ambassador as well, is to walk the talk. So important, right? We want to make sure that as a leader um, and trying to, you know, make sure that we are um, supporting and being there for those brand ambassadors, it's going to be important that we walk the talk as well. So what I mean by this is there's alignment and leadership with what the brand stands for, um, being in, you know, being authentic, being in integrity, um, making sure that your brand ambassadors know at any point in time what to expect of you and they know they can you know they can trust you you can build that sense of connection and rapport with them and that's going to be incredibly important for them to feel like they you know they have leadership that is there to support them but it, in order for them to feel that level of trust and support they need to know that they, their leaders actually walk the walk so if, the, if you're telling your brand ambassadors to do xyz or to be these types of people then you need to make sure that from a leadership perspective that you are also walking the um, walking the talk, basically. And so um, the part of this also is not being uh, afraid as a leader to share your mistakes, right? And to own your mistakes. Um, because a lot of um, great leaders, uh, the reason they become great leaders is because people see how they handle the times that are tough, right? The challenges that they face and all of those things. And this also helps your brand ambassadors navigate those more challenging times as well. So that is what I have for you. Those are the 10 things. Um, and so basically, just to quickly recap what we just talked about. Number one is to, uh, when you talk about brand ambassadors or employees that you want to um, create into, you know, brand ambassador. It doesn't matter what level of employee or, you know, what the, uh, what your, the employee's responsibility is. Any employee can and should be a uh, brand ambassador, right? So in order to do that, there's 10 things that I talked about that is going to be really critical to turning your employees into brand ambassadors. One is caring about what they care about, caring about them as whole people, not just what they can provide at work, but caring about who they are as people and what matters to them. Number two is to equip, train, and empower. Number three is um, growth and development opportunities. Um, number four, strong connection to a cause or a mission. So basically making sure that they feel like they have meaningful, impactful work and they're making a difference in a way that matters to them. That's the key. 
Number five is feedback. So having that feedback loop open so that they feel like they, you know, they feel safe to share their feedback and they know that it's going to be taken seriously. And then you have the opportunity to provide feedback to them as a leader as well. Um, so support and advocacy. So this is about having their back, advocating for the things that are important to them that they need as ambassadors to be able to represent the brand really, really well. And then celebration and acknowledgement. And next is psychological safety. Having clear guidelines and expectations is number nine. And then number 10, we talked about walking the talk. So I hope this is helpful uh, for you. I would love to hear your comments, any thoughts, any questions that you have for me. Happy to um, to answer. But before we get into that part, so I, I definitely want you to think about any questions that you have for me. But what I also want to do as part of this presentation is I want to make sure that you have something tangible to walk away with and something actionable as a next step. So this is what I have for you. What I would like for you to do, regardless of the position that you're in, I would like to rate yourself in each of those 10 areas that I mentioned. Um, I want you to rate yourself on a 10 point scale in each of those areas um, as like reflecting on yourself as a brand ambassador. So if well, the very first thing we talked about is caring about or what, you know, uh, what they care about as a brand ambassador. So uh, thinking about um, where would you rate yourself on that 10 point scale. So if you rate it and, and how are you doing in that area um, personally? So if you rated yourself lower than a 10 in any of those areas, ask yourself, what can you do to get to a 10? So what is that, that gap that needs to be filled? And then I want you to commit to taking an action, even a small baby step to get you closer to that 10. So if you are a leader in particular, um, this is definitely going to be uh, very applicable to you because you need to make sure that you are focusing in each of those 10 areas. Um, and so what I would do is go through this list of 10 things and I'm going to show you the list again. So if you if you haven't been taking notes, this is a good opportunity to do that. Um, and so what I would encourage you to do is go through each of these 10, um, you know, these 10 steps or these 10 areas, rate yourself on a scale of one to 10. How well are you doing in this area right now? And if you rated yourself any lower than a nine, what I would ask next is how what can get me to a 10? What is missing that is stopping me from being at a nine or at a 10 on that scale? And then go take one small step towards making progress in that area. So again, it's caring about what they care about, equip training and empowering, um, development and growth opportunities, strong connection to a cause and mission, um, that feedback loop, support and advocacy, celebration and acknowledgement, psychological safety, clear guidelines and expectations, and then walking the talk. Okay, so we talked about this. So basically, just to wrap up, I want to say thank you so much for your time. I never take this for granted. I know you could be spending your, you know, your time doing other things. So I want to thank you for your time and your attention. Um, if you need additional assistance, feel free to reach out to me. My website is Sebastian. Um, you can schedule a free call with me if you'd like, you know, some uh, personalized assistance in any of these areas. Um, and or if you have any questions, any thoughts, I would absolutely love to hear from you. My email address is info at trissasebastian.com. It's up on the screen. So feel free to contact me at any time. So thank you so much again. I look forward to hearing from you. Uh, thank you. Thank you much for your speech, uh, Sharissa. Uh, it was like, you know, like an information tornado run uh, in, in our heads. Uh, so we have a couple of questions in our chat. Okay. Uh, the first uh, question is, uh, do you believe a person who is a brand ambassador can sell using webinars like a tool? For example, AliExpress uh, vendors organize online webinars to present goods. Absolutely. So, yes, I think. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. You you can answer. Oh, okay. I was just going to say um, they absolutely can, but I feel like uh, kind of going back to one of the things I talked about. They really need to be equipped and empowered to do that. So, as a brand ambassador, if they feel like um, there's alignment between how they represent their brand, and they they're very clear on the information that they want to present and the intention behind that and it's aligned with the brand or what is expected of them then absolutely they can use you know webinars as um as a tool so i hope that answers the question i hope yes <laughs> so uh the next the next question uh why do some companies do not allow employees to speak about the company outside of the company uh, of the company especially corporations Oh, that's interesting. Um, so I haven't come across this um, a whole lot. 
Um, and I think it depends on the type of company it is, right? And the intention behind the company. Um, but really, if we are an employee of a company and other people know that that's where we are employed, we almost naturally become a brand ambassador just in who we are because we are on some level representing that company. Now, of course, there's some, like you said, there's some companies that do have a policy around like you can't share much about the company um, at all. And that's, you know, that's perfectly fine. But I ha honestly haven't seen that a whole lot. Now, with those particular companies, they might not expect you to be a brand ambassador and that's fine right you i mean you, you can only do so much um but if there is an expectation of you to represent the company and then it's going to be important for you to understand what that means so what is, what is the expectation of you and how do they want you to do that in the way that is aligned but in a way that also makes you feel like you can represent yourself and the company really well yeah okay so uh Thanks for the interesting perspective. Yeah, <laughs> everybody writing uh, things. Thanks to you for this information. Any questions uh, in chat? Maybe you need some other information or <laughs> yes, yeah, the information tornado. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I hope it was. Uh, I hope this was good, and I hope that you know. I know there was a lot of information shared, but. Hopefully everyone took at least one thing away from uh, from their presentation that is going to be helpful. So. Yeah, I think uh, that uh, people will uh, like build it from the bricks on your, of your information after our summit. Good. So okay. if, if uh, nobody have uh, other questions, then we can have a break uh, right now, I think. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. <laughs> Thank you everyone. So, uh, thank you very much, uh, Sharissa. Uh, thank you. That uh, that was really a great amount of information. Uh, thank you, and uh, we'll meet you on uh, our next events. Sounds Have good. A nice... Thank you so much. You too. Have a nice day. Have a Bye. Nice day.